this is one of the strongest robot builds in Solaris. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to utilize them to their full capacity. We'll be hitting 4,000 tech, 500 alloys, and a surplus of every resource a month by year 75. The crazy thing is we will hit repeatables by also stacking research speed with this insane tech. And I'm playing on multiplayer standard settings to 0.75 times tech cost. This is all to prepare me for taking on the 25 times crisis for my first ever time. This will be for the second part of this playthrough though, so if you want to see that, like the video and comment down below for part two. Now, let's get into the video. Now, the very first thing we're going to do once we get into the game is to get rid of maintenance trim workers. We don't need 89 stability. We want to work our jobs. So we're just going to reduce that until we're working everywhere else. We're also going to go to isolationist for a bit more unity. And then we're going to research anything that gives us tech. And in physics, if you did get an energy grid, take that. We didn't, unfortunately. The reason being is energy is so so good as robots have the highest base income of any species for energy that's why we've also gone for superconductive to get even more energy we're then going to want to survey our biggest world that is this 18 size and then we're going to send our military fleet to explore we need to find more planets we have got lucky by seeing three planets off the bat we can settle anywhere because we're robots we've also got subscribers which is you which you should probably do and from my robot tips video someone mentioned invasive species for bio trophies which i thought that's actually pretty good every negative trait we get five percent habitability and five percent pop growth we've gone for traits that don't even affect our species as their bio trophies so we're getting 20 percent habitability and 20 percent pop growth which is slightly better than going for the pop growth habitability and unity modifiers we're also going to want to buy minerals and a few alloys and we can sell all the consumer goods that are being produced this allows us to get progress towards buildings quicker which means we can produce more resources get rid of maintenance drones and expanding because uh expanding is quite expensive for robots our civics and rogue servitor that allows us to have the bio trophies which gives us unity and complex drone output one percent for each bio trophy this isn't that significant early on but it will stack up with every pop you have and we've gone remnants which means we can restore an eco monopolist which will give us alloys and with loads of bio trophies it'll give us a lot a lot of alloys and then we've gone rapid replicator this is more of the late game civic 20 percent mechanical pop assembly speed rather than building reduction costs because we want to try and fight the 25 times crisis and potentially 56 if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like as i'll do a part two where we fight the 25 times crisis and then a part three where we fight the highest difficulty crisis possible now the first thing we're going to build is an industrial district we need alloys alloys are a bottleneck right now as colony ships cost 400 and construction ships cost 100 50. We're going to wait to spend our alloys and first get a colony ship as this takes longer than building a outpost. Then we'll survey our other worlds so we can grab those when we have the alloys. And while the bio trophies wait for the new starbase and planets, they and you can download today's sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. Are you ready to embark on a journey through the stars to explore the vast expanse of the universe, command legendary ships, and join epic battles with players from every corner of the globe? Picture this an open world spanning from the Alpha to Omega Quadrant, yours to explore freely. And guess what? it's free to play making this extraordinary universe accessible to all now what's star trek without its iconic characters and ships captain kirk spark the enterprise they're all here step into the shoes of your favorite starfleet officers and command legendary vessels like never or transporters replicators the technology from Star Trek Universe is at your fingertip, adding strategic depth to your gameplay. Join a thriving community of real players, form alliances, and forge friendships as you journey through the stars together. And get ready for an all-new immersive Star Trek story in the Kelvin timeline, offering you a fresh narrative to explore. And here's the best part. You're invited to join the celebration of STFC's fifth year anniversary. Take part in birthday activities, contests, and giveaways while you immerse yourself in this thrilling universe. So, fellow adventurers, Boldly go where no one has gone before. Customize your fleet, recruit iconic characters, build mighty ships, and conquer territory. The universe awaits your exploration. Install Star Trek Fleet Command now using my link in the description and pinned comment and become a leader of a mighty alliance. Now back to the video where we're going over more important rogue servitor tips such as first tradition, expansion, on development speeds nice, but we're mainly here for the new colony starting with one additional pop and 10% mechanical pop assembly speed. We're trying to scale, build as many robots as possible, as fast as possible. And the first agenda, I always go finding the voice. Unity is very, very nice. Okay, we can build that colony ship. You don't actually have to have the system. And as soon as we can, we'll build the system here. And we just keep exploring with the military ship. Then whenever we can, we will just build. I will go research labs next. Science is still very good. We want to get as much science as we can. And we've already found a contact that's very 
very nice. And this seems to be another empire. What I'm going to do is backtrack on ourselves to see if there's any planets here. We can rush them down before this empire takes them. They'll probably get these two planets as they already have a starbase here, but it's good to be observant of your surroundings. And we found a fanatic xenophobe on our borders. Great. Now we're going to go down this right path, only get these two right things. We will grab these expansions later on. They don't really matter for us right now. Colony ships up, colonize as soon as you can, and then do exactly the same for the next planet of your guaranteed. In terms of what traits you should pick, these are not that good, but assembly speed is decent. So we'll grab that. I usually go assembly speed or ship build cost reduction. This will be hugely important later on, and it's a level two, so we've already got 10% reduction. It adds up. And our supervisory node, society leads, give it a better name. Maybe you want to give it one from our Patreons. Which you can write down in the description. We've gone for a scientist and spark of genius research speed, just stacking as much tech and everything that you can get. And nicely on this new colony, we will get building cost reduction and district cost reduction. That's very nice. Those who do get an expertise archaeo studies, this doesn't matter too much. Again, stack research speed and more research speed and ship weapon damage. Hydroponic farms are crucial. We will need to expand our star bases, which means we can build hydro base on buildings and solar panels on modules, which will fund our economy hugely while we tech rush your alloys. But first, it is good to finish Gallant Corp Hob assembly speed that we are just building as quickly as we can. Look at all those benefits. Leaders have been changed so they can all work on planets. Unfortunately, this doesn't just give us energy, but it will buff energy, which is really tempting. And I'm going to go for it. We'll build the scientist up as our energy governor. I like that. Okay, so there were no planets up there. That's great. We could expand to just get choke points, but we need to be very careful in the way that we expand because we need to be efficient as possible and just go for planets. We need a lot of planets and keep just reducing maintenance shows. You can put on automation and it should do that more automatically, but I prefer just manually doing it. I don't trust the automation, even though I am a machine. We have found a relic world up here. That's huge, actually. Second Ecomonopolis. We'll get our scientists expanding that way. Now, usually I would try and build star bases once you've got your two guaranteed habitables, but because we have another planet, I'm going to save up to get another colony ship and inhabit that. The quicker you can inhabit your planets, the quicker they can build up and get you popped. It's crucial. And with the minerals, we're just going to keep trying to expand this planet for building slots for more science. Now that we've got these two right trees on expansion, we're going to go prosperity. This helps us build up these planets even faster, gives you less upkeep, gives you more output. It's really good. Okay, the first world is here. How I choose what these planets will be what is just based on the districts and any buffs. This one does not look good for anything except for industrial, but we want to check the other planets like this one. This is going to be energy. This ocean world is dreadful. It could be food, but genuinely you don't want food. We could turn this into a tech planet, which is probably what I'll do. That means our capital, we kind of want to make minerals because we don't have anywhere where we're going to be getting minerals anytime soon. This can change depending on the game, as you don't know what spawn you're going to get. However, if you do start with desert preference, you're more likely to get generated districts, which is what we want. We want at least one big world for generators. Cold worlds are more likely for minerals, and ocean wet worlds are more likely for agricultural. You can use your, that information to create massive, strong, starting worlds. Okay, now we have finished colonizing these planets, we're going to whack on Fortify the Border, which gives 50% upgrade speed and more capacity star bases. And then we're just going to go ham on upgrading every star base system that we have. And then we will fill them with resources galore. This will help fund the uh, X spam we're going to do, as well as alloys. And the first buildings we build are machine assembly plants, then a city district so that we can then build an organic sanctuary and move over some pops to start growing. We want everything that buffs pop assembly and pop grow first, and then we can start doing resources as we will just scale so so much. The star base is done. We can now do solar panels and hydro base when we have the alloys. And even on your starting planet, you can actually change the service umbilical from that to a hydro base because we don't really care about dock ship upkeep when we have three ships that aren't even there. We'll grab pop growth speed and energy grid. That's what we need to buff up our energy. This is so good because we get the edict capacity subsidies, which gives us tech drone output or more upkeep, but it just pays for itself. Energy grids, which give more tech drone drops, max generator district, and an energy credit from tech drones. It's very, very strong. Tips of prosperity will go down right path, then we'll finish left, and then we'll finish up the right. Found another planet that's huge. It's Tundra, so hopefully it's a good mineral planet because we're going to have two relic worlds that will pretty much be built for uh, alloy production. Okay, the organic sanctuary is done. We want to instantly move over one part of that planet so they can start growing because without anyone there, they won't grow. And my subscribers need to grow. So <laughs> please send help. And I was too slow to save the military ships. I keep doing this. There was a scavenger bot. That's a setback, but it's fine. This build's so strong. It, it doesn't matter. Those are great units with open arms. This will 
will increase influence gain from successful first contacts and make it quicker. Influence will be a bottleneck as well as alloys, so having a good first contact is great. This isn't entirely a war build, but you can just use it to murder everyone eventually. We're going to build one Corvette and get a new commander, because using them to export is still valuable, even though we just lost, uh, we lost a few, uh, you know, just a few ships. It's fine. I'm going to stop working artisan drone jobs as well. There's not much point in having them once you're net positive. You can sell them. We're already selling 17. I'd rather work alloys. We found the Catharian Stella Hegemon in Germany. We will just be friends with them. There's no point causing a conflict here. And with the spare envoy, we may as well improve relations just so they don't attack us. And it means we don't need to build up a massive army. That's drain on resources at the minute. You might notice I'm also not improving resources. I do this last unless the construction ship has nothing to do and I have a lot of minerals. But as you can see, construction ships are just expensive expanding towards our planets and I don't have minerals. Speaking of minerals, you also don't need Hunter Seeker drones, so I negative that because I don't want them to work a job that gives one unity. Not again, not again, not again. I called it. Oh my gosh. Run. <laughs> Why is there constantly people in the way? No, don't go that way. The biggest issue right now is minerals. So I really got to convert some districts. Like there's food jobs that we don't need because we're selling 51 into minerals on our capital here. Pan went quick. That's pretty cool. Another dire world. Oh, not another one. Might work the guy world, even though there might be some events that will stop you completely utilizing it. Okay, this isn't even a good mineral world. Yeah, we need our capital to produce minerals for now, but we're going to turn it into an eco monopolist, which is not going to give us minerals. We I mean, really need to find a planet that, you know, gives us minerals or fix that. Also has a level eight anomaly. I think it's how we get another side ship. Yeah, you can see we're um at 326 tech, 15 years in. Decent resources. We're doing quite well. We just uh, need minerals and we're finally finding a bunch people we finally finished prosperity which will give us more resources from jobs and we can get our first ascension perk edict fung's really good with capacity subsidies but because i'm greedy we're going to go tech ascendancy first which gives us 10 percent more research speed which applies here which just amplifies how much tech you are gaining damn it i think they're going to beat us to this construction that's so annoying so they've gotten these planets that's fine we can go back for this continent well okay this relic wills up it's also good for minerals for us but also will eventually be restored to an eco monopolist but we may as well make it minerals for now just to help us get strong we can maybe get vassals to cure our mineral depression yeah i'm just keeping on top of these uh star bases free resources and then we can just pump everything into tech essentially tech is king because it just gives you better resources more efficiently and better ships better everything and we can exploit astral threads we're gonna do that since we have some of those resources knocking around and we found that empire next we're gonna finish off expansion just so we can rush the vetic age and then a decent efficient in terms of monthly selling there is a limit until inflation kicks in that's 64 if you want to know all the numbers and just have it on hand in my discord there's a pinned comment i just keep referring to because i keep forgetting the numbers to be honest wait my bio trophies i found them are they the same my subscribers who knows but we'll establish the embassy that holds a huge we can use all this alloys we've just been stockpiling to upgrade our star bases to get two more solar panels each weather control systems is quite good as it means we can get closer to anti-gravity engineering but we're nowhere near Need restoring the eco monopolist yeah it says we've not been given a good mineral world we'll just have to make this one into one hopefully that just helps us stick along we are up to 102 minerals which is nice Create order is huge it means we can uh get aided in our research for 3,000 energy what the hell are we gonna afford it once we oh actually we can maybe get principles of knowledge as we can maybe get opinion by paying them yeah but we just need a bit more energy though essentially we can get even more research speed by getting a bit more opinion with them good stuff the rift in space monthly physics research monthly unity for less alloys sure we don't really care too much about alloys at the minute even though we're going to go on a mass upgrade spree and pretty much have none left that's fine oh we just got high quality minerals you shall make minerals solar panels bam yeah only solar panels expansion is done we're gonna get executive bigger which means we can whack on fast subsidies now anti-gravity engineering we just <laughs> don't have the minerals at all to then restore the eco monopolist we can work to it especially if we start thinking about militarizing they are inferior in tech overwhelming in fleets but we have one corvette so we can start working towards that with good old disruptor spam but now once we've cleared the blockers technically we can <laughs> restore the eco monopolist but we need minerals 10,000 minerals it's not too far off also we're not hugely close we've also found monthly physics or more tech yeah i'm dumb and forgot you need 
three traditions to get synthetic. We're going to go Supremacy next. This is going to help us build up our navy, make it cheaper. We also are building up slowly. They're still overwhelming to us, but that's fine. Okay, we can finally get the fundamental principles of knowledge. We'll pay for that. That means our node now has 15% research speed, more survey speed, increased chance for all rare tech. So we're up to 60% research speed, which is huge. And we're up to 811 tech. So we are just skyrocketing in tech. We're weak in terms of economy-ish, not even really, but we're pretty strong in terms of tech, which will just feed into everything else. I see we're on your equivalent, just building a few Corvettes. Once we get them to be inferior, we can make them a vassal through war. And they're now inferior, which for some reason isn't totaling inferior. Usually we only need two to be inferior but the people down here are inferior even though they have two inferiors so we'll build up an army and then we'll go murder them vassalize them you don't really want to kill and take planets as a rogue servitor you could maybe take a planet or two if they're on your border but you can do that in a vassal war like i could claim when quirk which i probably should do to have max influence and then when you do a vassal war you get the systems you claim and you make the rest of tributary is very, very strong. We're going to grab habitats. We can actually start building them with the excess alloys and influence. Just become even stronger. We can reform our government with another civic slot. Rock breakers is really good for more minerals. But since we're doing vassals, we're going to grab introspective for more engineering research speed. We're going to rush down the best decks. This is actually the point that I realized. But ship cost reduction is not being applied. Now, you might think this doesn't really matter, but... I've been min-maxing that, or at least taking a lot of things that give that. So we have 10% here, 5% here, so 15. We are going Supremacy, which would have given us another 10 to 25%. And we had military buildup running at one point, which gave 20%. Almost 45% ship cost reduction. That's why I've been struggling building ships, because we have no reduction applied. We'd have almost double the ships for EVA. I actually don't hate this. I think ship cost reduction leads to massive scaling issues. This makes this game a lot harder, even though it's applied to AIs. AIs don't really min-max that sort of stuff. Maybe they'll get lucky and take that. But for a human player, you usually always go it. I don't really mind it. And it just shows the power of this build um, if we beat the 25 times crisis. But we're going to be insanely strong either way. Oh, and we also have a wormhole that goes to the lost. So that's great. They want to declare war. No, 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 no. I'm declaring war on you, my friend. <laughs> oh, the chosen, I mean, not the lost. Okay, let's get this tribute tree in. This is a great way of boosting your resources and expanding. Vassal turns into the tier below the difficulty you're playing at so they still get bonus resources so they can actually produce resources very efficiently compared to you now we still want to expand and take space so we can build rings in the future and mega structures but we can focus on that later on and with this fanatic xenophobe i'm gonna leave a gap of systems because we will just die they'll declare war on us no our research node got a negative great research speed five percent that's so annoying and we should just clean these up real quick the only thing i'm really doing is just taking down planets and i've got the army set to aggressive so they follow my fleet so i don't need to micro load and because they're inferior it's gonna be very easy we just need actual transport troops that does mean military buildup is pretty much useless ship upkeep is all right do we even get reduced ship upkeep yes we do but it, you mainly want it for the ship build cost so we're just i guess we'll skip it with some spare influence we're just gonna take a few claims we don't really want their planets actually i just want one system i'm not too greedy we've now hit 1000 sides even before you 50 and we've got astral actions these are actually pretty good very new um i'm just gonna keep making astral things so that we can explore them and now we've kind of expanded i'm just serving all of the leftover systems we can construct on them before an ai gets any idea to take them from us later in the game we will need systems to build all the cool stuff to help us actually defeat the crisis which you don't see me do often and we've won so now <laughs> our resources pretty much get cured it's not actually that many but it will expand we can negotiate contract now they have kind of changed how vassals work so i'm not actually sure how viable spamming my are so i'm just going to test that in this game we'll see now try and do some communication so we can get the galactic immunity going that'll be important to buff up more resource production eventually become custodian so we get more ships and all the nice buffs there you go galactic community and our corvette fleet is now at 27k so we can just go around and make everyone tributary so that's what we're going to do we also try and take a few systems extra planets a wormhole in that war we don't need too much space and we don't want too many pops because they will just turn into bio trophies which we need to house and sort out that's the only issue with rogue servitor but that makes vassals even better okay let's get another tribute tree they can come from this side we should be fine sometimes foreshadowing they of course went that way <laughs> uh, yeah, i'm just gonna 
split the fleet. That's not how you split into two. Why is it not doing a 50-50 split? That's so annoying. Yeah, we dealt with them. They just literally instantly retreat. Also, when building up your planets, simulation sites are great. It buffs the unity production and you should just always have a unity going. And when your buy trophies are full, make sure to build another one so you can keep growing them on that planet and reproducing. Wait, they have two mega... They have a ruined ring. Oh my gosh, I need that. I need these right now. They have a ruined strategic coordinators that are and a ring next to each other and they haven't claimed it. Give me. And another vassal. We did get three new worlds and you can see they've just been moved to bio trophies so we will need organic centuries. Now, I don't really know how when work work that's fun twister but we basically get more bio trophy calculator output twice got custodian but less of everything else but what i want to do is turn this into a research build 100 percent then we can just fix these planets by just building bio trophy building these guys hate us we're gonna improve relations the tribute tree but these are vassals very weird but we're getting a healthy amount of resources from them so now we can actually start to save up the eco monopolis i think it's time we build a refinery world just so we can start upgrading tech on tech planet all those rarities okay this wormhole goes the other side of the galaxy we're also pathetic to us does everyone just suck in this galaxy no not entirely the most important thing we use our influence on is getting these ruined mega structures we can build them up way quicker than building them from scratch and a ring would be insane okay, we've actually got enough to buy the amount of minerals we need to convert this into an eco monopoly but it costs influence i forgot about that ah oh, the pain we really want this system though i go off isolation to the expansionist to reduce the cost by 10 percent maybe that will help I'm 56 off now oh, this ring has civilization on it. Oh my gosh. And since our base resources are kind of covered by our vassals, now we can go manufacturing focus for more complex output. This is going to boost our science and alloys even more. Okay, we can finally build the outposts here. These bio trophies are very sad. They've got this stellar culture shot, which is pretty annoying. Don't know how to fix it. There we go. We have the strategic coordinator center, which we'll be able to repair once we have mega engineering. This gives more naval cap, I think. Yeah, pretty good. And then we will also build here. It's now cheaper because we have a system next to it. Can we just take the ring from them like to try that and then while we wait more vassals this is pretty much it i'm not gonna announce it more unless uh something interesting happens but we're so so strong compared to the galaxy because of our insane start we can just do whatever we want i'd spare influence I would be changing contracts around, but we want to restore the eco monopolis soon. More little tip, if you want to start ramping up your assembly and your resources are fine, you can actually move three robots over or two, get to the max three, to start assembling as quickly as you can. Planetary supercomputer has changed. The Empire modifies 5%, but you get more leaders. Uh, it's all right. I, I, it's kind of better, I guess. Finally, I've influence restore the ego it takes 10 years it'll increase housing resource production top growth and unlock special district which will give us more buy trophies which will give us more alloy jobs oh it's gonna be very nice yeah i want this ring as well so let's invade that uh fpl policy doesn't allow fpl aggressive interference now i can land there we now have a ring <laughs> look at it also bug what the heck have we done it's a shattered ring but we can restore that once we have mega engineering we can just start building it up and it's kind of bugged too which which is funny. So two city district, yep, another tribute tree. We're getting 364 energy from subject taxes, stonks. And we could just do another one instantly. I'm also going to want to build an orbital ring above our capital so that we can buff the alloy production even more. We're going to go nutty with alloys. It's a third essential pick. You definitely want to go synthetic age because it unlocks the synthetic tradition, which is just very good. Your robots. I've not been maximizing uh, leaders one bit, which is actually quite bad. So let's try and do that. Let's get leaders to buff up what they're doing. So alloy alloys or alloy we can check that every five years synthetics just buffs up robots a bunch we're gonna assimilate machines into our machines another one yeah they hate us but it doesn't matter because they still give us a bunch of resources okay, we've got astral siphons now which will just give us more threads which means we can just use them to do cool stuff the 2k tech now i want to push that number as high as possible we need repeatables we're also top in the galaxy collective waste management's very good just passing things and trying to make it so everything benefits us to squeeze the numbers as high as possible. Even more alloys. Yes. Eco Anopolis has been restored. The main issue now is we don't have enough jobs. Let's just no, not all maintenance drones. We're just gonna pump this alloys with sanctuaries and then the rest of the building slots can then be research. It's going to be an insane capital. Remember, we have bio trophies that are giving us 20% more complex drone output. So these alloy workers are giving us, um, yeah, 14 alloys, even the base is full. We also have that orbital ring up and running, which gives us just a base of one more alloy from jobs. Wait, I also don't have the alloy building, which will also make alloy output go even higher. Robot output 10%, stonks. Almost at 3k tech, 66 years in. 
Nice. Not to mention we have insane research speed. 3k tech. Nice. Let's get the Galactic Council going. Mega structure. Restoration. Yes. We've hit year 75. We have vassaled most of the galaxy. This half, uh, Will Garmite's just doing it. It doesn't really matter if they don't like us i guess but there's been no negative event we've pretty much hit repeatables as you can see here oh jump drive take that we're getting mega engineering in six months and we also have an insane planet that we can't even build quick enough to keep up with the amount of pops we have from 500 alloys a month 4,000 tech. Our raw resources are being funded by our vassals, but it allows us just to go hard on alloys, unity, science. This is all 75 years in. We also have insane diplomatic weight. This is basically how you start and dominate a game with rogues. If it does. If you'd like to see me take on the 25 times crisis, let me know in the comments. We'll do it off the save, which will spawn in 75 years. So we have another double this game to prepare for the crisis. And um, I've never actually fought the 25 times crisis, so it would be a good test, especially hopefully by the time I record that they fixed the uh ship build cost reduction stacking that's why i've not really built many ships but we also do have 120k fleet scrub and they're pretty good designs special thanks to star trek fleet command for sponsoring this video and don't forget to use the link in the description or scan my qr code here to get a special starter pack to help you out and if you're looking for more solaris click here to watch when i started with an astral rift and i use every action to see how good they were